Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be showing you how you can process your leave payments in Mile. So we're talking about annual leave and sick leave here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that your annual leave and sick leave pay categories are set up for your employees. So we're going to go into the card file, card list. We're going to have a look at our employee here. Mr. Charlie Watts put in many years of stellar service. He's done the company proud. All right, so we're going to payroll details, wages, and here we can select the pay categories that are going to show up when we process the payroll. So we're going to have annual leave pay here. We can click into this arrow here and have a look at the settings. And it's saying that the pay rate is at the standard rate so we're happy with that and we're going to add in the personal leave pay which is your sick leave so we'll click OK we'll close out of that and now we'll go process the payroll so we click on the process payroll button here in the payroll module we select our pay week and the pay week we are processing is the 31st. Actually, we'll go with the 17th to the 23rd of October with the pay date to be on the 25th of October. And we'll click Next. And this is our list of employees. We only have the one, Mr. Charlie Watts. So we'll click into his pay and we'll see he has the base hourly default here for 38 hours. But what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, 38 hours a week, that's based on 7.6 hours a day. So let's say he had one day's annual leave and one day's sick leave. So we'll put 7.6 here into the annual leave. And into the personal leave, we'll put 7.6. Into the personal leave, we've got a warning here. What's this say? Paying this leave will result in a negative leave balance for Watts. The current balance is 2.4 hours. Accrued this pay is 2 hours. Leave being paid is 7.6. Okay, so he's only got uh, 2.423 hours accrued. So that's all we should really be paying, 2.423. And now the warning is gone because we don't really want to be paying leave that he has not accrued and, and causing the balance to go into the negative. Now we have to adjust his base hours to reflect the two days leave, even though he's only getting 2.4 hours for the sick leave and not the full day's pay, we still have to take out the full two days from his base. So two days of 7.6 hours is 15.2 hours. Now from the 38 hour week, we minus the 15.2 hours for the two days, which means there's 22.8 hours base hourly for this week, which is three days. And I'll just show you that very quickly. 22.8 divided by 7.6 hours per day is three days. And we've got a warning here for the annual leave. The annual leave, the current balance is only 4.846 hours. So we don't want to take that into the negative either. So we're going to change that to 4.846. Now you do have an option here of using some of the accrued hours for this pay, but this was an option that was never available in the past and with many payroll platforms you can't use the the current payroll accrued hours you can only use what's been accrued up until this point because we haven't processed this payroll yet therefore nothing nothing's been accrued yet so just sticking with that basic principle we're just going to put in we're only going to use the hours that have been accrued up until this point that's not including this payroll which is 4.8 Four six. So we got 
22.8 hours base hourly. That's his three days. One day's annual leave, but he's only got 4.8 hours accrued. One day's sick leave, but he's only got 2.4 hours accrued. So that's all he's going to get in this example. If he had the full hours accrued for annual leave, he would have got the full 7.6 hours. And same for personal leave. If he had the same hours accrued for his personal leave, his sick leave, then he would have got 7.6 hours. But in this instance, that's what he's getting. We can see the accrued hours for this payroll down here, which haven't hit the general ledger yet because it hasn't been processed. And that's why we didn't use it up here. But you may choose to factor that in into how many hours you're going to pay out. That's up to you. And we'll click OK. And there we go, his net pay, age 62.42. We're going to record that. And then, of course, you can send off your pay slips and process your STP. But what I'm going to show you now is the actual pay advice, which is pretty much what he's going to get on his pay slip. So we're going to go to payroll, payroll advice, filtered on the payment date, which was 25th of October because that's the day that it hits the general ledger. All right, here we go. So the 25th to the 25th, that's the payment date. Pay period was 17th to the 23rd of October. We can see here the gross pay, the net pay, and we'll scroll down. And here we can see base hourly 22.8, 35 an hour, 4.846 for annual leave, 2.423 for personal leave, which is his sick leave. And then we got the annual leave accrual here. And as a general rule, sick leave accruals aren't showed on the pay slip. And of course, you've got his super. And that's about it. So I've made a bunch of other videos of how to do payroll and set things up in my ob. Go have a look at our uh, YouTube account videos there and have a look and see if there's anything else there that might be of help to you. But that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something. If you want to book in a training session, training is pretty much what we do. Uh, we do these videos to get our name out there, but actually going out and performing training, that's our core business. So we can come out to your business and do some training there. We can do online training as well. We specialize primarily in accounting software, but uh, we work with all kinds of business software. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you later.